Colombia has pursued a long-term policy of supply-side reduction against coca, and what that has meant has been eradicating the coca crop itself. The story that the government has told is that reducing coca crops will actually reduce the levels of violence that Colombia is experiencing in the countryside. We look at this thesis in the report, and what we find is actually, in many cases, the opposite. Many of the supply side reduction tools, such as forced eradication, is in fact exacerbating insecurity and limiting the state's ability to consolidate their control in rural areas. The 2016 peace agreement with the leftist guerrilla, the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, or FARC, imagined an ambitious rural reform and a voluntary substitution program that would help coca farmers switch to legal business. But an issue arose. When farmers heard they would be paid to pull up the coca plants, they grew thousands of hectares more, and since 2016, coca crops have set record yields. The government's response has been to dramatically increase eradication, sending security forces to rip out the crops by hand. So unfortunately what this does is creates a conflict. The conflict is between the Colombian state and the armed traffickers who run the drug business. But farmers themselves are in the middle. Growers who depend even more on the crop to survive during the pandemic have confronted security forces in different parts of the country. Cuando uniformados del ejército ya llegaron hasta esta zona, pues así lo recibieron los campesinos. When the FARC demobilized, there was this moment of peace, this exhilaration of, of feeling that the conflict had ended. Within one or two years, however, armed men started showing up. Soon it became clear that they were from an amalgam of different groups and essentially it began to clash with one another and with the community itself. And not only have these families faced a new wave of violence, the program that had promised them a new life away from coca has been slow to deliver on its promises. In particular, very few former cultivators have received the financial help that they were promised to invest in growing a new crop. La experiencia sobre el programa del PENIS, pues eh, nos, nos ha traído buenas experiencias, pero también muchas eh, malas, más malas que buenas, porque el programa cuando se inició venía con un tema y ahorita ya nos están cambiando las propuestas. Entonces estamos ahí de que no sabemos qué hacer y hay mucha gente de que ya está retomando como otra vez el cultivo ilícito, porque el gobierno no ha cumplido. Many families who grow coca don't want to be growing coca. They do this because it is the only viable option in the areas in which they live. And given the opportunity, the vast majority of coca farmers in Colombia after the 2016 peace accord committed to voluntarily eradicating their crops if there was another viable option to support their families. What's been missing since the peace accord is that viable option. And this isn't an easy, equation to solve. It's not merely about providing subsidies or the opportunity to grow new crops. It's about creating an environment in which a legal economy can function, which means access to markets, it means better roads, and frankly, it means security, which is something that has been deteriorating in recent months and years since the peace accord. Hemos, hemos sobrevivido realmente en unas situaciones difíciles, precarias, ya que nos, el gobierno no nos cumplió ni nos ha cumplido. Nuestros hijos están quedando sin estudio, nosotros hemos quedado olvidados, sin salud, sin vías, eh, eh, así viviendo, sobreviviendo en lo más mínimo. Entonces nos sentimos defraudados por el gobierno nacional, esperando un apoyo y estaremos siempre dispuestos a, a esperar ese apoyo. One of the key conclusions of our report is that the drug policy that Colombia, with the support of the United States and other international allies, have been implementing to eradicate coca as a means to reduce the drug supply and to reduce the conflict, is in fact backfiring. Because the eradication, it's undermining one of the other primary goals, which is to consolidate peace and to consolidate state control over these areas that have been vulnerable for so many years to armed group presence. The forced eradication has in fact increased in security in rural areas, undermined the state's ability to consolidate its control, to have credibility, and has completely failed the poorest 
of the poor in terms of providing them a route through which to re-enter the legal economy and find the protection and the security that they deserve.